All right, let's get started on this next MacBook. Mail-in A1706, no power, possible liquid damage, a.k.a. actual liquid damage. What do they do to you, MacBook? Who hurt you? Did you see Jack Dorsey on Joe Rogan? Yeah, I listened to the show. There were a couple of interesting moments. I'm not really sure why that most high profile, the, the highest profile bans on my platform took place. I'm not really sure of the details of that. I'm not really sure about the most high profile banning on my platform. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what he did. Uh. I mean, I don't really care at the fact that they do certain things. Like, if you want to ban somebody, by all means do it. It's just if you're going to make an effort to go on the one of the premier, uh, you know, discussion, podcast, news shows of our generation for the to get in front of people and have a real honest discussion rather than these 10-minute discussions that you have on mainstream media. Like, if, you're to, if you go on, let's say, Fox or MSNBC or CNN... You're stuck with this, like, two to five minute constrained discussion of people yelling over each other, so you have bullshit answers you give for things, and fine. But you're going to go on a show where it's known for its two to three hour discussions and have answers that are that weak? Really? Like, what's the point? J just, just have a discussion with somebody from MSNBC, CNN, or Fox. Doesn't make any sense to me. It seems like a total waste of the platform. And a lot of the answers given were just kind of half-assed. Very, very half-assed. It was quite disappointing for me. I mean, I'm happy that it, it occurred. At the very least, you get to see the conversation. I, li I appreciate the fact that Joe Rogan does those shows because it is difficult. I mean, if you think about it, it, doing interviews is harder than you think. And I've tried to do interviews with different people. And you have things that, what I've noticed is all the things that I really wish that I said or all the questions I really wish that I asked, I figure that out right after the interview is over. Or, man, at this point, it would have been great to push that person on this. It's harder to do than you think. So I respect Joe Rogan for the fact that he's doing something that is more difficult than most of the people watching uh, understand. Being able to have nuanced discussions with all of these different types of people. You know, Joe Rogan's one of the few shows that I can listen to that I know of that would have, uh, let's say, Kyle Kalinske on in the same general time period as you have Ben Shapiro on and be able to have an interesting two-and-a-half-hour discussion with each of them where I don't think it's just partisan crap, and y where you can get something out of each conversation. And there's very few out media outlets where, again, you could have, let's say, Ben Shapiro and then Kyle Kalinske on can actually learn something. You're taking 5.2 volts at 200 milliamps. Let's see if it jumps up to 20 volts. Because if it jumps up to 20 volts, that means our CD3215s are doing their job and working. Unfortunately, it's still stuck at 5 volts after a good 10 seconds. Which means that it's not, the CD3215s are not doing their job. The CD3215s are these chips at the edge of the board that are going to speak with the charger when it's first plugged in. They are like a much more complicated version of the old one-wire circuit that would allow the board to talk to the charger. This is a very complicated little port. Look at that little CD3215. Look at that cute little chip. So let's take a look and see what that looks like on our board. Disgusting. So first assumption I am going to make, first hypothesis, the chip that gets that power rail that has corroded looking stuff all over it may be dead and should be replaced. We're going to have to go off of some base assumptions here because I don't have enough information or things in reality that would give me a really good basis for where to, what to do next. Yeah, I had a teacher like that with U.S. History 2 box, man. I had one teacher that, he made the story come alive. Why, you know, what were the, what was going on in this town? What was going on in this country? What, that pissed people off? How, you know, how did that take place? How did people resonate with it? And how did that lead to a conflict? That was good. Then you had teachers that went, in 1888, this happened. In 1898, this happened. In 1899, this happened. In 1900, this happened. In 1901, this happened. In 1902, this happened. And the class was falling asleep. And then people were saying, you should listen to the teacher. Why aren't you listening to the teacher? It's like, that. what are you, what are you talking about? I don't see a teacher. I, I, I see Microsoft Sam reading a timeline. That's not a teacher. That's the thing. If your teacher can be replaced with Microsoft Sam and you don't notice the difference, then they're not a teacher.
Oh, underfilled. Whoa! Seven says any learning that occurs in the children's prisons is in spite of its design. Yep. All right, so we're gonna have to get rid of as much as we can with this underfill. This is gonna suck. What temp is your hot air gun? I don't know. However it's hot, it needs to be to melt shit. If it's not hot enough to melt shit, turn it up. If it's too hot and melting shit you don't want melted, turn it down. It's useless for me to give you a temperature. It really is. It depends on what you're... One of the big reasons for that is the temperature you get from different stations is wildly varying. So, for example, a JBC, which is an $1,800 station, a JBC set to 450 Celsius outputs 517 Celsius. However, the Weller hot air station, when cali this is fully calibrated, set to 500 Celsius a few days later will put out 490 Celsius. Well, even if I give you a temperature, it's not like you're going to be working with something that's accurate enough to to matter. Use what works. You're going to have to figure that out for yourself. There's nothing I can do for you there, I'm afraid. All right. So got rid of a lot of our underfill. Let's see how lucky we are today. Connected pad or not connected pad? One, two, three. You are a not connected pad. Yay. I don't have to care about that pad. You're going to notice that the pads that are not connected tend to come off very easily because they're not tied to anything. Yeah, see, the two pads that came off at the top and the bottom were both the not connected ones. Oh god. Uh oh. I did something stupid here. Oh my god, again, again, what's that? What's that? That's 20 volts. That's 20 volts. The chip was soldered on wrong. I soldered the shit like this. I tapped it with my tweezers. I confirmed that it was soldered diagonally. And then it moved. And then it worked. That shouldn't have worked. That should not have worked. That was bullshit soldering. And it worked. That was awesome. <laughs> My raffle copter goes swah, swah, swah. By the way, people, if you need a CD3215 C00 and you don't want to buy that CD3215 B03 crap that you find on every other website that sells the chip because that chip won't actually work in a touch bar MacBook, then make sure that you check out store.rossmangroup.com. At store.rossmangroup.com, we sell the proper chip that is going to work on a touch bar MacBook. We sell the CD3215 C00 revision that will actually get you voltage on a touch bar. You can check it out at store.rosmangroup.com. Buy four and you save 16%. Buy 10 and you save 22%. Buy 20 and you save 27%. The savings, they stack at store.rosmangroup.com.